I am Dhanari Wetlands, good enough to be designated a Sara Sanctuary and a Ramsar site. I have existed in my pristine condition since times immemorial. Every winter day, you can find me in my surreal and most attractive state. As soon as the fog of the day lifts and the sun rays shine and come forward, I am vibrant with the sweet calls of Tara Springs and thousands of other birds. The world was ignorant of my charming beauty, birds, rich fauna and flora. Only the residents of surrounding villages enjoyed the beauty. Completely oblivious, I was destined to be destroyed and converted into a residential colony. Over 50,000 migratory and residents birds, along with flora and fauna, would have lost their home and shelter. But on the fine morning of 1st June 2014, walked in Anand Arya along with five of his birder friends searching for Sara screens in other wetlands. Little did I know that Arya would be my benefactor and protector. For Arya, having just lost my sister wetland, Dadri wetlands, it was what is termed as love at first sight and everything that follows. Knowing the love intimately, vowing to love and protect, and he has done exactly that. Retiring from active service in 2002, he has indulged in twin passions of watching birds and photo and videographing birds, wildlife and nature. This is my story in Arya's voice. Why is it so important that Dhanari wetlands must be put on a cellulite and the message spread about it? Let me answer. Because Dhanari is a representative wetland and meets the criteria to be declared as a Ramsar site and a Sara sanctuary.
Dhanauri is an important birding area with 216 species recorded so far during the last five years. Of these 216 species, 18 are either vulnerable or near threatened or endangered. A wetland by definition as enunciated under the law by the Government of India, by the Ramsar Convention and the International Union for Conservation of Nature is an area underwater, under marsh, a peatland, man-made or natural. The examples are the estuaries, the mangroves, the lakes, the oxbow lakes, the tanks, and any such area that has water standing over it or flowing. Apart from their natural beauty of flora and fauna, the wetlands are extremely important for the water security of any country and in particular of India. For example, with only 2% of the global fresh water available to India for a 15% share of population, then this becomes a lot more important. The wetlands serve a very, very important function of recharging the groundwater. 90% of the population in India is dependent on the water extracted from the ground for drinking purposes. Wetlands have an enormous use in providing good quality water. So the idea is to conserve and use. That is our principle on which we work, on non-invasive solutions for the planet. Because not only can you conserve it, and you have to conserve it, to use it. So if the use provides natural mineral drinking water for a large population of a town, then those wetlands become immensely useful to human beings and have a very high, not just a natural value, but a very high economic value and a very high human health value. So what we need to emphasize is that we can conserve them and use them, or we can use them as long as we conserve them. Otherwise, all gone. 85% of the agriculture, where there are no other irrigation facilities available, is also dependent on groundwater. And it has a tremendous amount of economic value. For example, one hectare of wetland gives us approximately three to five million liters of water every year. And imagine, with 15.2 million hectares of this country being under wetlands, the amount of potential for water is enormous, is really enormous. And this wetland constitutes only about, only about 4.5% of the country's geographical area. And therefore, for us, for humankind, especially the population in India, it is extremely important that we conserve the wetlands and manage them in such a manner that we can always be free of worries about water. Dhanauri is home to over 150 Saras cranes. Perhaps the only roosting site where such a large number can be seen anywhere in the world. This marvelous display of emotions by Saras cranes is rather rare in birds. From March till the monsoons arrive, the gathering at roost is fun and also a place for young adults to find their new soulmates 
and also the time for courtship dances. For the people of India, the Saras cranes hold a very, very special place because it is said that the epic Ramayana got written because of the Saras crane. The great epic Ramayana was written in a metrical form by the poet Valmiki, who felt great pain at the killing of one of the Sarases by a hunter. He cursed him instantaneously in a worse form and that became the metrical system of poetry in India. Even otherwise, the Saras crane, being the tallest flying bird across the globe and has a population of just about 8,000 remaining. And this population is declining as well. Come August, the nesting begins. Till September, the prospective parents build their home with the reeds, which is about two by two meters. The nests are made often in the shallow and marshy areas of the wetlands and also in paddy fields. Over the last five years since discovering Dhanauri, I have been lucky to see the complete life cycle of cranes except for the actual mating sequence. After a month of waiting, life slowly unfolds to a new beginning. Based on my records of last five years, the Saras cranes lay two eggs in the nest at an interval of about 48 hours. The incubation period is about 26 to 36 days. And when there is a change of guard for incubation, that is the change of duty, there is normally a soul stirring dance by the parents of Saras. Both the parents take turns to incubate the eggs. Closely guarded by the mother, within a couple of hours, our little junior can balance himself upright. The second hatchling appears after about 48 hours. But for the wild, it is all about survival of the fittest. Brotherly love is not so common to find than fratricide. By eliminating the weakling, any kind of competition for food is also taken care of. Like most birds, the chicks can not only walk when two days old, but a little known fact is that they are also very good swimmers. The chicks are now in their so-called early teens, growing from 6 to 8 inches at birth to almost 2 meters in 3 months.
catching a snake for a snack is a treat worthwhile for them and worth watching for the spectators they will follow their parents till they achieve maturity and then the parents are ready to breed again but their numbers are slowly dwindling due to the loss of habitat saras has been placed in the vulnerable category by the international union for conservation of uh, nature primarily because of the loss of habitat and therefore serious decline in the numbers the population at the moment is pegged at just about 8000 in india thus tagged with the vulnerable status of saras grains it is essential that the nori be protected as not only a wetland but also as a saras sanctuary Nothing can be better than the dance of the national bird the Indian peacock. It is perhaps among the most beautiful of birds especially when it has extended all its feathers to entice the female and dances to various tunes. The nori is full of over 50,000 birds during the migratory season beginning from September and ending in April. A little over 100 species of waterfowl can be seen at the nori during the season. These comprise of the ducks, the geese, the waders and a large number of birds of prey. The birds of prey cannot be far behind when such a large population of their prey is available at the nori. for a wetland with waterfall to be recognized as a ramsar's wetland of international importance the the nori wetland meets the full criteria first there are about 50000 birds to be seen every year that we have recorded over the last 5 years whereas the criteria for this number is just about 20000 as laid down by the ramsar convention the nori hosts over 30 species of birds of prey out of a total of 100 seen in india egyptian vultures and endangered species and almost on the brink of extinction from india are almost always present at the nori they can often be found feeding on a turtle Here are a couple indulging in grooming and then finding a turtle and then going about their business of finishing it. Common kestrels are a delight to watch through the season. Just a couple of males, but any number of females can be seen during the season. The second criteria for recognition as a Ramsar wetland is the presence of about 1% of the biogeographical population. of one particular species here at the nori wetlands we have recorded over the last 5 years the presence of anywhere between 140 to 
Sarah's cranes at the roost time, late in the evening and early morning. It is a super sight when a raptor is on the hunt and the birds take the evasive action by taking out. Flutter of 50 to 100,000 wings is a joy to hear and behold. Then, on the ground, one can sometimes see some action between an eagle and a snake. Many species of snakes have been spotted here at the North East. A waterfall make the real numbers. It is indeed a great one to watch thousands of goats, ruffs, blacktail, godwits, pintail, shovelers, and many others in smaller numbers. What a pleasure it is to see bar-headed and grey-like geese with their cacophony every morning and evening and whenever they take off to air. Bar-headed geese perhaps have the strongest heart among all the birds in the world. It is amazing to see them flying at 30,000 feet over the Mount Everest where there is hardly any oxygen available. Their hearts beat at about 400 times a minute. At the same time, the resident ducks and the smallest goose, cotton pygmy goose, is not to be forgotten. Weavers are probably the best architects in the world. Their nests cannot be entered by even slimy characters like snakes and these nests cannot be blown away among the strongest of storms. It had been a great pleasure to see the great bittern visit the Nori wetlands in 2016 and 17. It was a huge attraction and any number of birders from all over the country and some from abroad visited just to have a look at the great bittern walking out into the open when it is known to be an extremely skulky bird and seldom shows itself out in the open. Common stone chat is among the smallest and perhaps the first of the migratory terrestrial birds to arrive. Black drongos are almost always present and are perhaps among the most ignored birds, except when the two of them sit together and start a debate like they are debating on Indian TV channels. Pied cuckoos and common hawk cuckoos. They are the harbingers of monsoon and it is well known, especially in Mumbai, that the monsoons are not far behind once a pied cuckoo has been spotted. The white cuckoo travels all the way from East Africa, riding the monsoon currents. 16th May 2019 became a day for which the birders actually live. I was witness to such a wonderful sight of the parent taking the, its chicks on under its wings and protecting them from the inclement weather. Perhaps among the most colorful and beautiful migratory species, northern lapwing is a most sought after bird at the Nori, as also anywhere else. Look at the colors and the luminescence. It needs good light and pollution-free atmosphere. Wetlands act as carbon sinks to keep the environment pollution-free. Jacanas, both bronze-winged and uh, pheasant-tailed, are yet another very attractive among of the birds. A typical 
TDH tall dark and handsome bird that comes as brown and goes off after assuming dark almost black breeding colors before heading home Great to see thousands of waders with the large majority being made up by ruffs and black-tailed godwits a near threatened species Soon as Mar- February March arrives Kentish prowlers can be seen in the outer areas of the marshy parts of the wetland that start drying up a bit Among the large waders present at Donnery wetlands are the four species of storks, three species of cranes, three species of ibises and of course egret spoonbills and herons in unlimited numbers. Spoonbills and storks have their own system of finding their prey. They stir the muddy waters and find what they are looking for. Black neck stork is an endangered species and perhaps one of the most difficult birds whose beauty is not very easy to capture on cellulite. The pond herons are almost always present throughout the 365 days. They are very silent, very still and then just go about and spare the prey. they are a joy to behold when they are in their prime breeding colors wetlands are great hunting grounds for raptors or birds of prey wetlands provide a variety of prey for different species of raptors donnery is indeed a great wetland where on several different days during the migratory season from september to march one can spot as many as 16 species as i did one point day of december 2016 On raptor migration routes, say in Thailand, 30 to 35 species are spotted on a single day when the raptors are migrating in thousands. Brahmani kites are indeed a joy to behold especially as they are both hunters as well as uh, scavengers it's a great sight to see them hunting picking up the prey and then eating it while flying in flight Despite being recognized as an important birding area, it had been a struggle and a huge campaign to save not only the Nori wetland but all wetlands across the country. Despite this huge struggle, the protection remains available only on paper. In spirit, the government of India and states have not made any effort whatsoever to initiate action for protection 
Once the decision was made that we need to save the Nori wetlands and also other wetlands across the country, then the first step essentially required talking to the concerned officials whether they really understand what is involved in such saving such beautiful places. The letters were written, personal interviews were uh, done with them, presentations made, but unfortunately to no avail whatsoever. <laughs> Therefore, I was left with no other option but to approach the National Green Tribunal. Sometimes I find that the NGT passes orders but doesn't follow up on the action. So it was easy to get the order, but to get them to pin the state of UP to actually implement the order became extremely difficult. This particular case about wetlands, of course, we started doing because uh, Mr. Anand Arya, who's a very, very keen birder, came to us and uh, he was very keen on protecting wetland. Till date, they have not identified any wetlands which need protection. So that is what the writ petition was about. So uh, we got an interim order, uh, which was a very, very important interim order, saying that uh, the two lakh and odd wetlands, which are 2.5 hectares and above, which have been mapped by satellite imagery, those have to be protected. After persistent follow-up since September 2014, the Ministry of Environment, Government of India, has very recently asked the state of Uttar Pradesh to submit a proposal for declaring Dhanori wetlands as a Sara sanctuary and a Ramsar site. We have to reach the decision makers, such as the Prime Minister of India, the Chief Minister of various states, and also to the media to act as our spokesperson, to act as a pressure point such that not only the Nori wetland is saved, but all the remaining 757,000 wetlands are also saved. Please join me in my campaign and crusade to save the Nori wetlands, not only as a wetland, but also as a Ramsar site, but also as a sanctuary for Saras Cranes.